Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and today I actually want to talk about the NYPD, the New York Police Department, because they've been keeping a DNA database on innocent people. Sadly, I'm not surprised, but here's what's going on. This is coming from the New York Daily News, and this is essentially what's up. The New York PD, NYPD's DNA database is comprised of an ever-growing number of genetic profiles of thousands of innocent New Yorkers, and I assume those that came into the orbit of NYPD outside of New York, including children. And this is according to a new lawsuit. Now, the Legal Aid Society, in a suit that was filed this past Monday in Manhattan Federal Court, is asking a judge to declare unconstitutional the, quote, practice of secretly taking, analyzing, and maintaining people's DNA in its suspect index. Now, the Public Defenders Group seeks to order the NYPD to expunge those DNA files and their records. Apparently, there are 31,826 DNA profiles in this database at last count, according to the lawsuit. Now, the database, which is maintained by the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner, has been the subject of debate in the past few years in New York City. The NYPD says that it operates within the bounds of the law, and that the database is an important tool used to obtain justice for each crime victims. But critics have said that any policy that allows police to collect DNA without consent, such as by offering a suspect a soda, then keeping the can for forensic analysis, even if the person is not charged with a crime, is a violation of their privacy rights. And I would tend to agree with that. They've also noted that while a conviction is required before someone's DNA can be entered into a state-run database, those built by local authorities, such as a municipality like New York City, operate outside of the state or federal requirements. Now, Dave Pollack, the legal aid lawyer, said in uh, basically of the DNA unit, and I quote, the city's decision to ignore state and federal law while secretly collecting and permanently storing the DNA profiles of thousands of people should send a chill down the spine of every New Yorker. The NYPD's troubling ruse offering our clients a drink or a cigarette after hours in a precinct without food or water and then using it to surreptitiously collect their DNA is wrong and illegal. Now, the suit was actually filed on behalf of Shakira Leslie, age 26, and Shamil Burgos, age 22, and they are the Named defendants, or rather they are the, the plaintiffs, the named defendants are Police Commissioner Keechan Sewell, other police officials, and Dr. Jason Graham, the acting chief medical examiner for, I assume, New York City. Now, according to the suit, Leslie in 2019 was actually arrested when police stopped a car in which she was riding with five other people when they found a handgun. Now, during uh, her interrogation, Leslie drank from a cup of water offered to her by police. Charges were dropped against Leslie as she was not in possession of this gun, but her DNA profile was never removed from their database, according to this lawsuit. The same goes for Mr. Burgos, who was also arrested similarly for gun possession in 2019, but the suit says that the officer, uh, the police officer offered him water and a cigarette and then later collected the cigarette after he had left the interrogation room. His DNA was stored in the database and is still there. Charges against Burgos were also dropped and he is now in the military. Now, Legal Aid released to the media two NYPD videos involving two other criminal suspects, one of whom drank from a water bottle while the other one was smoking a cigarette. In both videos, an officer enters the interrogation room after the suspect has been let out and recovers the evidence so it can be tested for DNA. Now, as for the uh, New York PD's official position, Sergeant Edward Riley, a spokesperson for the NYPD, said that these lawsuits will be uh, reviewed and I quote, the NYPD's investigations and tactics, including the collection of DNA, are guided by what is authorized by law, the wealth of case law from the courts, and the best practices of the law enforcement community. Behind every time the NYPD collects DNA from a suspect in a criminal investigation, there is a crime victim who is suffering and seeking justice. And quite frankly, some of that is a bit hollow, only in the sense that, yes, we have uh, basically victims out there and we need to collect DNA. But at the same token, that is something that is intrinsically ours. And if you are a suspect in a crime, then there should be a court order that basically says your DNA can be collected because you're accused of whatever it is you're accused of, uh, you know, that the victim says, oh, it's, it's you that did it. 
Now, if you are found not guilty in the in the case of Ms. Leslie, for example, or Mr. Burgos, uh, what essentially should happen is that their records should be expunged. They weren't actually, while they were arrested, they were not actually charged with these crimes, and therefore the collection of DNA is illegal. They're storing it. Essentially, if you're looking at it from this, this perspective, the NYPD is actually storing their DNA for what they believe are possible future crimes. Maybe these two ended up being repeat offenders and they're now they're collecting, you know, DNA at a burglary scene and they can match it to somebody that they had in the interrogation room, you know, two years ago or something like that. I can understand that logic for the NYPD, but at the same token, if you've done nothing wrong, if you haven't been actually charged with the crime, or if you've been charged with a crime and those charges were later dropped because you were proven innocent, whether it's by a court of law or the real suspect comes forward or the police find the actual suspect that, that did the crime, your DNA is intrinsically yours. It should be expunged. So I'm not a fan of the uh, NYPD doing this, but it also opens up the question of if they're able to skirt essentially state and local laws, what other major cities out there, LA, Chicago, Atlanta, Houston, Dallas, etc., are doing this as well in contravention to state or federal law. And if the NYPD as a local, quote unquote, local municipality, even though it is like the most populous city in the world, can do this, that really opens it up for the other massive cities that the United States has. And I think that's something that we need to investigate. So this is your interesting news of the day. I'm not a fan of the NYP doing this, but heads up New Yorkers, especially those in Manhattan or I guess in the five boroughs, your DNA may have been collected if you were ever in an interrogation room for whatever way, shape or form, even maybe as you were a witness and they offered you water, a cigarette or something else. So heads up to you. You might want to look into that. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online and please stay private, especially in New York. Thanks, everyone.